Hello, this is Joe Marzillo here to talk about the effects of uh, bow torque on third axis on your sight. Uh, we've talked a lot about uh, bow torque itself in all the videos and you've seen by watching them uh, some bows produce quite a little torque and some bows are almost zero torque. So it is my view that a bow with very little or no torque is a desirable situation because you don't have to overcome that uh, problem with every shot. It's done all the time. People do it with proper handling, but so much the better if it's not uh, there at all. No torque is a good thing. Now, there's another aspect of bow torque which we haven't covered, and that's how it affects third axis setting on your bow sight. Now, third axis, uh, properly set, uh, is a big advantage but it's not understood too much how uh, a bow with torque affects third axis. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, first of all, here's just one bow sight. And we're going to talk about first and second axis. First axis is just the adjustment of the, of the slide on your sight up and down. It is parallel to whatever reference uh, feature that you use on a bow. In my case, I always use the... Uh, the machine side of the bow where the uh, actually uh, where the bow sight clamps onto. And the second axis is once this is established, you want to get this level this way and this way. And now it's perfect level when this is vertical, this is level. Third axis is a problem when you shoot uphill or downhill. Let's go downhill right now. And if it's not set properly this way or that way, what you'll get is a bow, a bow level that's going to go uphill or down level and when you use that level, which you should, to align your bow, you're going to create an error. So uh, in a moment I'm going to go down to my little workshop where I have do most of my uh, uh, investigation and studying and uh, we're going to take a look at the various ways to measure that and how you can correct for it and what's, and what's uh, proper. All right. See you in a moment. Well, I just thought I would start with a little uh, tour of my shop. This is where I do all the bow analysis and, and also bow setup uh, as, as needed. This is my uh, bow press and uh, it's complete with all sorts of servings and ability to tie various loops and so forth. Uh, you've seen this device before in, uh, in the bow torque videos. This is part of the setup for uh, laser bow torque and it's also very handy for a uh, draw board, a vertical draw board. You can see that's where the bow nests in there. And this is a uh, tester that I built about 10 years ago and I, I made it so you can test a, a 24 inch arrow because most of the spine testers uh, use a 28 inch span and that is way too long for most arrows and here is a bow setup vise I made a number of years ago and it's pretty handy you'll see that in the videos okay enough about my shop let's get on with okay it. these are the tools I've used uh, to make these videos and to do the third axis analysis first I'll show you a, a bow setup tool I made a number of years ago. Uh, it's very accurate. Mount the bow in here like so. It goes into the uh, stabilizer hole. Mount the bow up, down, rotate it, do whatever you want to do with it. And you can set up first and second axis and also third axis if a bow has no torque. Uh, as well as that, here's a very handy little tool uh, by, by Hamsky Archery. This was uh, primarily uh, developed and designed by uh, pro archer Tim Gillingham and it's a wonderful little tool to set all the axes on your bow and as well as do dynamic third axis. We'll talk about what dynamic means as opposed to static. Uh, and here is a piece of equipment I designed specifically, designed and built specifically just for this demo. And what does it do? set the bow up right here this acts as a bow setup uh, positioning position 
and you can set it up for various amounts of torque one two three degrees and that will emulate uh, a third axis shift created by bow torque and we'll get into that in a moment okay here's a uh, a new bow that I just installed in the uh, bow fixture happens to be a brand new Hoyt uh, Hyperforce the reason I'm using this bow because it generates uh, quite a bit of torque and we're going to see what that influence is in a moment there it is now this bow has already been set it's a uh, first axis is right on you can see the level is perfect and you take a look at this level and uh, let's see if I can zoom in on that there it is that level is perfect as well that indicates that first and second axis are on perfect um, that's as it with regard to uh, whoops with regard to a static setup this is a static setup there's no movement we're just setting everything up all those relationships now I'm going to take the same bow I'm going to rotate it uh, 45 degrees and we're going to take a look at the same level that level is also still on it shows that the uh, third axis is perfect uh, static static meaning that the bow has not been drawn yet so we're going to take a look at the same bow after we've uh, uh, compensated for the torque that this bow develops and we're going to see what that bubble looks like after it's properly adjusted and how we're going to do that we're going to take and draw this bow back and use this rod as a reference point this rod and the mounting surface here are parallel to each other I'm using this tool because it's just easier uh, for me to do that and so now once I come to full draw I'm going to line this rod up with a plumb line I've drawn on a wall here that line is plumb and I'm going to adjust the third axis until I have a situation where when this line is parallel to the plumb line that the, the bubble in the site here is perfect zero and you're going to see what the effect of that is in a moment okay here is the same bow back again and uh, the third axis has been adjusted dynamically meaning the bow was drawn and this rod here which is parallel to the uh, mounting surface of the site was aligned with a mark I have on a wall that's plumb so now when this bow was drawn and that line and that rod was aligned with that I kept on adjusting the third axis until the bubble here was zero you can see it's still zero it's zero zero as long as the bow is perfectly upright and we're have a good bubble here that's still zero and we'll take a look at the fixture and the fixture says zero rotation zero torque which we know is not so so I'm going to rotate this bow 45 degrees there it is I've got a mark already put on there so I know that's 45 degrees that's pretty pretty stiff downhill shot let's take a look at where that level is now that level is off over a, a half a bubble uh, let's see if I can zero in great there it is it's uh it's it's off a good half a bubble and uh, so what I'm going to do right now I'm going to zoom back out and uh, put it back down to uh, put this adjustment here down until that bubble becomes uh, zero this bubble becomes zero and you'll see how much torque there was in this bow okay we're back again I've uh, torqued or twisted this bow until this bubble was perfectly in between the two marks indicating it's now level level at full draw but level at full draw what does that mean now the only way I got a level of full, full draw was to rotate it at two degrees a two degree rotation which is if you look on the videos you'll see that this bow had quite a bit of torque and that's the, that's the effect of that torque has on third axis if you went to just zero zero everything with no 
uh, with no dynamic uh, adjustment of third axis, you would definitely have an error when you shot that bow at a downhill slope. Uh, and it gets worse the further you get out, 40, 50, 60 yards. Uh, you're going to have uh, a point of impact that's uh, less than desirable, let's put it that way. So uh, there are some people that would say, well, oh, that's only necessary for target archers, and I disagree. Uh, if you miss a shot with a target, you lose a few points. Uh, if you take a bad shot at an animal, you're going to wound it, and it's going to bleed, and it's going to suffer, and uh, that's going to be a result of you not making your shot as good as you possibly could and part of that is getting your equipment on so there you are I'm going to rotate this down and we're going to take a look at uh, what the bow looks like when it's all the way down in fact back down uh, perfectly up and down you'll see that this the bubble is now perfect and if I take a look at over here again you're off by what two degrees two degrees that's the rotation this bow has in your hand and that's the effect it had on third axis level. There's one thing I forgot to mention, uh, and it's important. Uh, bows that have very little to no bow torque uh, really don't need a third axis adjustment because the accuracy of that bow, coupled with the machining accuracy of any good sight with no third axis, will most likely result in a very fine situation that doesn't require any third axis adjustment whatsoever. So save yourself a few bucks if you have a boat with uh, no torque. Thanks. So in conclusion, what does this uh, video demonstrate? It shows that you really need to do your third axis dynamically, meaning the bow is drawn. It can't be done statically. This is a fixture to do it statically third axis and you can see it was not accurate uh, you don't need as sophisticated tools as i have here to do this i i do this because i can it's a lot of fun uh, i developed this fixture uh, specifically for this video just to demonstrate what goes on here what do you really need to do it to, to adjust all your axes you could buy uh this uh hamsky uh what do they call it easy third axis level this will do first axis, second axis, and the dynamic third axis. That's all you need. This, set of Allen wrenches, whatever, a place to clamp your bow so you can do first and second axis. Draw the bow back and uh, adjust it uh, with that reference tool that goes against this surface, uh, the mounting surface, and it gives you that nice uh, plumb reference line at full draw. You adjust your third axis then, and you've got it. Uh, and you won't be having a third axis error. I can't guarantee you're not going to miss that big deer or big elk, but you'll, you're one step closer if your third axis is on. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks.